This is Joe Delia from the Palo Alto Network's live community team bringing you a video tutorial. In today's video tutorial I'll be talking about how to use autofocus. What you will learn in this video tutorial. You will learn what is autofocus, we'll go over the parts of autofocus, and we'll show an example of how to use autofocus if you're a security operator or first responder. I recently featured autofocus in a frequently asked questions document, but I wanted to go over more of the detail of what is autofocus. Autofocus is a great threat intelligence service that can be used by security operators and first responders to discover important threats on their network and quickly distinguish the commodity threats from targeted attacks. Autofocus is a very fast searching analysis and correlation tool that works on very large data sets. It's a cloud-based service built on big data platform with a very large, highly performing in-memory search index which opens the data to allow for fast and powerful searching and correlation. It is built on the Wildfire platform which has over 110 billion artifacts. We receive tens of million files per day to Wildfire for analysis. We can then take that information and use autofocus to correlate, look at different attacks, and try to see if they are affecting your own network. Now let's take a look at the autofocus dashboard here and the components that we see here. You'll notice here that on the main dashboard screen we have malware all sessions here listing malware download sessions. Right off the bat you'll see that it lists here for the last seven days. You do have options to change this to make it 30 days, 90 days, six months, or as much history as you have with your samples or with our database here. You also have listed top applications, target industries, and top malware. These are all broken down for applications, the different types of target industries, list the top malware listed by the hash, 256 hash there. You can drill down and change the industry to my industry. If you notice here, even though there's a lot of data, it's able to populate the data pretty quickly. This changes it. When you change the tab up here, it changes top applications and top malware instead of what it was listed with all. You can continue to drill down into my organization. This is all the data that is provided by firewalls that are uploading files to wildfire. So this is specifically on you know, top applications, malware, and the firewalls that you actually are providing information to wildfire. We can continue to scroll down here and see that you have source countries listed off. You can change that to destination countries. You also have top tags here. These tags are tags that Unit 42, as well as many other industry leaders, can be tagging in here. Most of the Unit 42 tags are going to be orange uh, and others are going to be listed in here also. It shows you the matching samples and total samples that we have. And then you can even choose different tag types, whether the Unit 42 public or private tags. You also have alerts and then this is a feed to Unit 42. You can click on e any one of these to read the blog entries from Unit 42 site. As an example, if we wanted to click on one of these headlines from the Unit 42, how to track actors behind key loggers using embedded credentials, for example, we can see on the Unit 42 site how this is the detailed article that they have explaining all about different methods that can be used and information detailing exactly what they were able to discover. Not every, but a lot of these articles are going to actually have autofocus tags. So if you wanted to learn more about this is an iSpy software or Predator, Payne, Hawkeye, or Keybase, any one of these, if you wanted to find out more information, you can click directly on this and it will link directly back to autofocus. And this brings you to the tag. 
These tags, as I was mentioning before, show a lot of wonderful information here. They show number of samples that have been discovered through the artifacts that have been uploaded. Last time it was hit, the class is a malware family, and then the owner, which is Palo Alto Networks Unit 42. Uh, it gives a description of it, different references if you want to see that, different information here. This is a YouTube link that is available, uh, and then different behavior. But if you wanted to drill down to get more information, you can actually click the magnifying glass here, add this tag to the search. It brings it to the search area here. And then you can see here how many samples are provided just in your network. Or you can look at public samples and or all samples if you do not find any samples inside of your network. If you do though, if you want to find more information out now that you're at this point, you can click on any one of these SHA-256 hashes. You'll see here what the wildfire verdict is. You can click on it. It will actually bring you directly to the sample. The one artifact that was uploaded that was tagged with the iSpy software tag. You'll see the wildfire verdict enlisted as malware, the different information here. And then this is where you'll see the different sandboxes, whether it's a Windows XP sandbox or a Windows 7 sandbox. You'll also see these uninteresting items, its behavior, some suspect items, as well as any highly suspect items. This breaks it down to file activity, process activity, DNS activity. If you're a first responder, one of the first things that you want to do is see exactly what it does, you know, DNS activity is a great indicator of what's going on with this malware file itself. Uh, if you see here for DNS activity, it goes out to this idno2.fav.al, uh, and that actually translates, uh, you get a response here of 91.229.79.66. Of the samples, there are 12 samples that have been discovered and of those 12 they all have the verdict of malware so that's you know something that you might want to be aware of you look through your firewall logs to find this IP address to see if you have any clients inside your network and you know do further investigation uh, try to block IPs, do whatever you need to do to try to secure your network. If you're more of a researcher and you want to drill down even further into what's going on here, this is the DNS activity. The next area that we usually recommend to take a look at is the actual connection activity. You can click on this area here. This is what lists out exactly the behavior of the malware file itself. It will attempt to do DNS activity to resolve, but this is where you'll actually see connection activities here. Inside of here, sometimes there's an actual parent process that will be listed and you can actually try to look for an actual API or look for an actual uh, application name and you can try to use that information to add it to a search. And then again, drill down to see even more information. Um, we don't have that, but we do see that it did try to do TCP connectivity to the same IP address, 91.229.79.66, the same one that was listed in the DNS activity. So usually this is the command and control information that will be showing, you know, different behavior, connection attempts, whatnot, going through your network. This is also something very good to look at, look through your firewall logs, see if there are any actual connection attempts to this so that you can try to investigate further. Again, these are lists here 28 times that this was kind of discovered, and of those 28 times, they all were deemed malware. As I said, there's a plethora of information that is inside of autofocus that you could spend many hours researching, trying to determine exactly what's going on, whether it's affecting your network or just affecting your industry as a whole. Uh, it's a wonderful tool that can be used. So I'm just merely scratching the surface here, but giving you an example of what you can be doing with this. For a little bit more detailed information 
on autofocus I'll have a tips and tricks article that we'll be highlighting and uh, integrating it with this video tutorial. This concludes my video tutorial on how to use autofocus and as always please feel free to give any comments or suggestions at the bottom of the page and continue to check out our YouTube page and to subscribe there. Thank you very much. Have a great day and 